Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition's top stories. St. Lucia's Prime Minister puts forward a case for the region's own climate fund. The community of Babono takes a stance against chronic non-communicable diseases. St. Lucia receives a new cohort of Peace Corps volunteers. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. As climate change continues to negatively impact small island developing states, St. Lucia's Prime Minister and Chairman of the Caribbean Community, Honorable Alan Chastney, continues to lead the charge in building resilience against climate change. The Prime Minister in September will take part in a series of high-level meetings at the 74th UN General Assembly. There, the Honorable Prime Minister will, among other things, make a case for the region's very own climate fund. The Honorable Prime Minister says the region simply cannot wait to access the $100 billion fund which was agreed upon in Paris in 2015. Janelle Norville has that story. With the prediction of more intense weather systems as a result of climate change, the world must make the necessary adjustments so as to withstand the impacts. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, explained that the government of St. Lucia has recognized that change is necessary, including a change in the public's mindset and behavior in the face of climate change. Efforts must also be made to ensure that the country is more resilient, and that will require a change in the way it builds its infrastructure, among other things. While St. Lucia has been one of the leading countries in climate change, with a number of initiatives such as the 1.5 to Stay Alive campaign, challenges continue to rear their heads. Honorable Chastney noted that there was to be the establishment of a $100 billion fund, however it never got off the ground. Uh, nobody ever signed off on who was going to contribute what. And with America pulling out of the, the COP uh, contract or agreement or accord, um, the likelihood of getting $100 billion diminished significantly. So we have been working collectively to bring to the attention to the international um, uh, entities that we need to see um, the OECD change its classification from us because we cannot borrow development funds because we're all considered to be middle-income countries. So we're saying in the case of climate change, that we should use a um, vulnerability index to assist us. The Prime Minister added that there must be a review as to the amount of time it takes to draw down on funds made available, as most of them have long project cycles. This, he explained, is not ideal for small island developing states, as they are faced with hurricanes every year. Honorable Chastney also indicated that a review of the classification of debt is a must. Debt incurred as a result of the country's thirst to build resilience or to rebuild after a disaster added to national debt is not sustainable and repayment of such debts will require long periods. We've realized and at the last heads of government meeting, um, we've put forward that maybe we should create our own foundation. So like the Bill Clinton Foundation, have um, the Small Island Developing States Resilience Foundation. And Ireland and UAE um, and the, uh, uh, the uh, Prince Andrew have all been facilitating and working with us to be able to help us create that. So we have a, a, a series of meetings coming up in September at the UN in which I'm going to be able to articulate that and get people's support. So the goal is to get other agencies to put money for us into this foundation. It is also, we're hoping that the foundation could become what we call a special purpose vehicle, which means that the debt that it's going to absorb will be, uh, the burden will be put on to the foundation and not to the individual countries. The 74th session of the UN General Assembly is scheduled for the 17th to the 30th of September 2019. During the week of the debate, several other high-level events will also convene, including a climate summit and a one-day UN high-level meeting on universal health coverage. For the Government Information Service, I am General Norville. The agriculture sector is breathing a sigh of relief following the passage of Tropical Storm Dorian on Tuesday. Amanda Faye Clark spoke to the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph. 
For farmers in particular, he explains, the small stroke of relief does buy some more time to augment hurricane and tropical storm preparations and to fine-tune strategies to protect agri-based livelihoods for the remainder of the hurricane season. Coming out of the experience last year, tropical storm, good. I'm sure people, farmers would have realized that as a ministry we started with the support of the government of Taiwan, a tree planting program to create that windbreak in areas that we can establish these windbreaks and we are using tree crops that are what you call economic value and not the forest crops that after, after we still have to come back and cut it. So that program is going on well and I'm sure like we have in the past and we will continue to prepare ourselves as far as mitigating against flooding, doing the necessary drainage works, especially the major drainage outlets on, 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 on farms and on, 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 in areas where that is needed. While climate change continues to be singled out as the reason behind the growing frequency of violent storms hitting the Caribbean islands, Minister Joseph says farmers and fishers need to remain vigilant. We are happy that we will spread. Um, because we can ill afford any tropical storm at this point in time. We can ill afford any storm at this time because we, the, f the farmers are just recovering from tropical storm coat and any negative impact of a storm would really, really be discouraging, you know, and it'll be even more challenging for us as a government and as a ministry to go back and encourage these farmers to, to establish re-establish the, the, the fields. Minister Joseph said the Agriculture Ministry is working on putting an insurance scheme in place, the details of which needs fine-tuning. Hurricane insurance for the sector is a surefire way to provide an additional layer of protection for agri-livelihoods. The whole aspect of insurance plays a critical role and we cannot overemphasize the need for insurance. I had a meeting on Thursday last week with Marcy, which is a very good meeting. Um, when I did, had the opportunity to discuss and to encourage the farmers to look at insurance, I was told that there seems to be some review of, of, the, of the policy, um, which we believe is good in, in the sense that they need to look at how they can reduce on the trigger because the trigger is 65 miles per hour and 65 miles per hour is high and when you experienced last year we did not we did not experience 65 miles per hour but farmers will have to understand if there's any reduction in the trigger there will be an increase in the premium but it's something that we have to continue discussing with the respective insurance companies and see what are the possibilities and how we can at least provide that level of safety net because like i said whilst the insurance can ever give you 100% of what you lost. But with government support and insurance, it can assist our farmers in getting back on their feet as quickly as possible. In the meantime, agriculture officials will continue its work on implementing the action plan for growing the sector. From the Ministry of Agriculture, I am Amanda Faye Clark reporting. Chronic non-communicable diseases have for many years wreaked havoc among families worldwide snatching the lives of the young and old in an untimely pattern with St. Lucia being no exception. Cancer, diabetes and hypertension are among the silent killers that threaten the island's productivity. The community of Babano has decided to fight back by challenging its residents and the wider St. Lucian community to make positive lifestyle changes to live better, fitter and healthier. More in this report from Glenn Simon. Even when I was so tired and we were giving up, I said, we not give up! I must continue to the end. I thank God I made it. It was great. This feeling of accomplishment was shared by many walkers who completed the Adua's Babano Challenge Fun Walk. Now into its fourth year, the walk challenges its participants to make the lifestyle changes necessary to combat the devastating effects of chronic non-communicable diseases. The Babano Challenge Fun Walk and Health Fair is an initiative of the Babano Good Shepherd Catholic Church, whose parish priest is Father Celestine Nwakwo. Um, it's basically to create awareness about physical fitness, to incorporate both bodies, spirit and soul together so that a whole person can be complete. Endorsing the Babano Challenge over the years are none other than the most decorated sportswoman of the year, Laverne Spencer, and sportsman of the year, Albert Reynolds, both of whom are from the community of Babano. Just walking for fun and for health 
it's very important and the fact that they have like you know the health screening and the health fair and just you know local foods and everything i think it's just a great atmosphere for everybody to be here so it's a challenge to test yourself to see where you're at and where you can be and where you hope to be in within the following year this year's walk starts off at the Barbados school ground to Balata, Union, Mondudon, Bocage, T. Rocher, Hill 20, and back to Babano, which is the reverse of last year's route. From record, people have been so excited about it. And in fact, they've been asking, when is it coming up? When is it coming up? Because they love our roots, because our roots are very unique. Here are what some walkers had to say about the Babano challenge over the years. It is a good physical activity. It's not a lime for sure. <laughs> It's a good fitness workout, a uh, few hills, few slopes, you know, good pace. What I like about this walk, the route they changed was good, it was really challenging. A little bit of uphill, All right. it's good for you. All right. This is a real challenge. I have been to the walk from VG to Pigeon Point and this one is much more challenging than it. Committee member Janice Sonson indicated that the signature part of the event is the health fair and health education component, particularly for the young and young at heart. I just want to encourage all the young persons to take part in the work because health is important and we have a lot of younger persons getting diseases such as strokes, aneurysms, heart disease and all of that. Sonson said other elements of the event include a Creole breakfast, soccer size, prizes and medals for participants, a raffle, a prize for the best design t-shirt with a Creole theme, among other activities. We want you to come onto this walk because it's fun, it's exciting, it's a great family activity and an activity that you can do with your friends. Community member Gail Yonker agrees. It could be hard, you may want to give up, but just persevere and you can do it. If I can do it, they can do it too. The Babano Challenge is scheduled for Monday, October 7th, 2019. Babano Challenge 2019. Glenn Simon reporting. As St. Lucia celebrates Breastfeeding Month, the Ministry of Health and Wellness is seeking to help create an environment that supports breastfeeding. Ministry of Health officials say that while they continue to play their part in promoting breastfeeding, studies show that St. Lucia's rates of breastfeeding remain low. I think we are well aware that breastfeeding promotes a healthy baby. And even more precisely, breastfeeding decreases the episodes of respiratory conditions, conditions such as otitis media, bowel problems. So as you can see, it does promote a healthy, a healthy individual. <laughs> Also, it is interesting to also note that breastfeeding can contribute to a child's intelligence, the child's IQ up until 30 years. The theme for this year's observance is empower mothers, enable breastfeeding. You'll hear about mothers who have two babies and the one that is breastfed exclusively, they will, they will testify that this baby is, is usually healthier and has less visits to the hospital or to the doctor than the one that is not breastfed. And I, we can get mothers who can testify to that. So we are not just here just to talk and say, okay, breastfeeding is, is best, but it, is, it, is, it has proven over and over again and, and research continues to, shows, to show how beneficial breastfeeding is to the baby. And that was Public Health Nursing Supervisor, Pusha Ajoda. A new cohort of Peace Corps volunteers has officially been sworn in St. Lucia. The volunteers form part of the 91st group of Peace Corps trainees in the Eastern Caribbean. Anisia Antoine has that story. A new cohort of Peace Corps volunteers has officially been sworn in. The 11 volunteers form part of the 91st group of Peace Corps trainees in the Eastern Caribbean. The group will help fulfill the overarching goal of the Peace Corps Caribbean, achieving world peace and friendships. Associate Peace Corps Director Sharman Jules noted that over 1,000 Peace Corps volunteers have served in St. Lucia since the collaboration in 1961. We are delighted that this new group, these 11 trainees, accepted our invitation to serve here in St. Lucia and to continue the legacy, the partnership between Peace Corps and the people of St. Lucia. And they are here to serve in the capacity of literacy support volunteers. 
They will be working under the umbrella of the project that we are currently implementing on island, a primary English literacy project. The trainees resided with host families in the community of Babono while they underwent training and began settling into St. Lucian culture. The volunteers gave a demonstration of what they have learned from the St. Lucian Creole culture. Nouvelle oui métier famille nous en Babano. Zot entouye nous en kaizot, embrasse nous, supporte nous quand yon a dans ce yish zot. Apprend la gage créole avec nous, ek tuit bon manger, quand bec ek dite kako les dimanches. Nouvelle oui métier aussi pisco ek minis éducation Saint Lucie. Pour café possible pour nous sabay service nous en système éducation et en programme là pour développement jeune moun. Nous c'est un groupe moun qui ni différent pas mais nous tout à son ici a et yon tête pour supporter jeune moun et pour faire en contribution en l'état. Mangotin la baba kaboule ki idu ki isi mamele Anche be an tet punue, Anche be an we punue, Anche be an jam punue, Anche be an tet punue, An laka tuma laka tuma laka tum, An laka tuma laka tuma laka tum. The Peace Corps swearing in ceremony was held at the Coco Palm Conference Room on Friday, August 23rd, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous tous. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Go de l'eau et que la prendre de l'eau. Car détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud. Et qu'a tué place qui s'est pressé dans la gravité. La mer chaud a aussi changé de manière de pressé. Qu'a quitté de l'autre côté et aller à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit gaz en l'espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait. Pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre. Et il faut pour baisser à ce quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous tout au niveau de la terre, car le gaz, l'huile et le charbon. Et ça, quand on cause la terre, il a changé plus chaud. Ça, nous ne pouvons faire tout le même, c'est pour adapter. Faites tout ça, nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement du climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique quand nous pour abattre des manches en temps cyclone et godlo. Construire canal pour de l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assurer qui canal là par les ordi. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en temps changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout notre set les siens. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome everyone to your update from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister responsible for Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, the Honorable Dr. Gail Rigobert is keenly anticipating the inauguration of the St. Lucia Sports Academy to be located on the site of what was formerly the Groselet Secondary School. Dr. Rigobert was a guest on NTN's live discussion and phone-in program in focus on Thursday and gave some background on the concept of the Sports Academy. With respect to sports, that ambition dovetailed beautifully with a prime minister and this administration's um, vision to reshape, to refocus and reposition the sporting sector in total. And that holistic ambition um, went beyond rehabilitating fields, um, goes beyond building new sporting facilities, but very importantly, um, includes 
pro providing professional training for our young athletes. And that is where we came in as the Ministry of Education. The Sports Academy will be receiving its first batch of students during the upcoming school year. Football coach at the Boys Training Center, Alvin Xavier, is elated by the performance and social skills exhibited by members of the BTC football team during a recent tour of Grenada, where they competed in the Caribbean Charity Shield football tournament. The St. Lucians reached the semi-final stage of the tournament before being knocked out. Coming here, it wasn't about winning or losing, but basically the experience, gaining the experience so that they could be better in whatever they, they take on to, you know, not being with their family, being away from home, having to face adversity, and still to, you know, hold up themselves. Xavier said the performance was that much more pleasing as it was the first time the wards had left the shores of St. Lucia to compete at this level. For me, I, any game I play, I want to win, but overlooking the entire mission of this tour, we have already won. We have already won because I've been telling the boys it's about the experience, making mistakes, learning from it, getting up, dusting yourself, and being a better person. Well, of course, we know there are behavioral issues, but we had a plan from the onset that we'll be having meetings from morning and evenings to keep them on the toes, to keep reminding them of what is required of them, what needs to be to be achieving in such tournaments. We have an agenda, we had a mandate, and so we have to stick to it. So we know sometimes they're not as focused as they should be, so we were always having little meetings to bring back that, that focus. The team from the Boys Training Center competed at the under-17 category during the tournament. And that's your update from Youth Development and Sports for today on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The Department of Health and Wellness wishes to inform the public that the Morshi and T. Roche Cash Trees Wellness Centers have been closed for retrofitting works under the Smart Healthcare Facilities Project, geared towards safer, greener, and more sustainable facilities. Residents of Morshi and T. Roche Cash Trees are kindly asked to access healthcare services at any other wellness centers in close proximity. The Antipo and Labry Wellness Centers will also be closed by the end of the first week in September to undergo similar retrofitting works. As of Monday, August 26, 2019, the Bexar Wellness Center has been reopened for healthcare services to residents of the community. The Department of Health and Wellness wishes to thank the general public, especially those from the affected areas, for their continued cooperation during the Smart Healthcare Facilities Project. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. I am a child. I am HIV positive. I am a Muslim. I'm a journalist. I am gay. I am a political activist. I am differently able. I am Chinese. And me, I'm a little plus size. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance of individuality and differences within all of us. A message brought to you by the Department of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arcoyon. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur Madame Department of Universal Responsibility, Pour formation au gouvernement cette ci à ce GIS, à ce BP, Télévision Nationale, puis à NTN, à vous êtes au Nouvel Acoyol, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre, honorable Alan Chasney, c'est un parmi l'autre chef de ce pays, Caricom, 
qui trouvait un bon coup de chapeau pour des de préparation qui était en place pour Cyclone Dorian. Chef officier exécutif et directeur général pour l'association Hôtel et Café Touristique à Caraïbes, félicité le Premier ministre et l'autre chef gouvernement à CARICOM et les officiers touristiques pour manière de tenir tout arrangement en place pour si un Cyclone Dorian des fois à PCPA. Il y a aussi complémenté pour effort pour te faire assurer mon public là avec les étrangers au courant et puis de gérer du mauvais temps là de s'apporter pour la vie mon et propriété. Directeur a complémenté Honorable Chasney et Premier ministre Babad, Honorable Mia Motley, pour le service l'esprit présent pour continuer de faire des services de communication effectivement, ménagement des affaires des as et des marches pour faire assurer que les établissements hôtels sont toujours à de leur façon stable. Directeur général des affaires touristiques à Caribla, conseiller les autres chefs de gouvernement pour continuer pour une bonne proportion en préparation pour des as qui ont menacé les pays comme là. Festival Musique Roots and Soul a trouvé à Boutli dimanche, parce que dimanche en finissement, semaine passée, Pigeon, à Pigeon Island, et puis grande célébration et appréciation par les patrons. Et Moun Oli Wolate a été présent dimanche passé pour te embrasser le dernier spectacle festival là, côté les grands artistes performés, à parmi eux, c'était les artistes, c'est le même, avec l'autre artiste international qui a misé ses patois en pile. Il y a ces groupes là qui connaît fort et puis musique yo, c'était groupe international de musique reggae, UB40. Les organisateurs events, c'est de l'ouche, et tout play et puis mon festival là passé avec. Uh, tu vois, il y a un grand succès, officier de relation publique et puis Events Solution, Mene Veros, complimenté, autorité des affaires touristiques, ou bien organisé, pour faire ce spectacle à marcher comme doit être. Et il fait référence au agement qui était fait et puis avion en lire, côté ça a aidé pour aussi les mots au monde qui assistent à ce spectacle à sortir de l'autre pays caribé, là, Ross Kakwe, qui a été une relation qui a existé à ce pays, a aidé pour encourager. Les gens pour visiter cette ci pour participer d'un spectacle Roots and Soul. Les artistes là, ni ça, c'est cette ci et les autres internationaux, complémenté des degrés d'appréciation des patrons, bah yo, et que mon œil était très plein pour présenter leur performance à des gens pour des degrés. Yo gagne volontaire piscor nouveau. Ça a augmenté pour venir en 91 groupes en CTP Caribla, selon le directeur des affaires Piscoa, Carmen Jules, dit que Piscoa ne fait pas qu'ils suivent de la même façon que les autres avaient fait, quand ils ont essayé de continuer pour agendrer la paix avec les bons amis dans la terre avec CTP Caribla. Le directeur des affaires Piscoa a déclaré que plus de 1 000 Piscoa ont déjà fait service à cette ci Depuis 1961, c'est 1961, il a ajouté qu'il était plein de ces groupes neuf là qui ont accepté l'invitation. Il a accepté l'invitation pour bailler ces services là à cette ci pour continuer l'héritage du pays cette ci C'est plus qu'on neuf là qui a beaucoup de capacité pour volonté pour les gens apprendre à bailler un projet pour les gens qui ont C'est plus qu'on a habité et puis la famille en commune Babono, pour les gens qui ont trouvé l'étonnement en affaire de tout cette ci C'est un moment pour te faire monter. C'est pour un hôtel Coco Farm le 23 août. L'année 2019. Et c'est pour ça que nous avons une nouvelle là, mais c'est bien, moi, monsieur, autant vous regardez, moi, je vais une invitation pour que je ne puisse encore dire qu'on se la vie, je vais vous présenter une autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, je vais vous présenter une nouvelle. Merci, on Pale Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Fair to occasionally cloudy skies with a few scattered showers. Moisture and instability in the low levels of the atmosphere over the region will cause a few showers over the lesser Antilles during the next 24 hours. A weak tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 10 miles per hour or 17 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to affect the region on Saturday. Another tropical wave located over the far eastern tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tides for Castries Harbor, high at 3.28 p.m., 
low at 8.27 p.m. Tides for Viewford Bay, high at 4.35 p.m., low at 9.54 p.m. Seas, slight with waves 2 to 4 feet or 0 0.6 to 1.2 meters. The sun will rise Friday at 5.52 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Trost.